I'll just give it a, a quick minute just to let people to find their link and sign on. Okay, we'll get started. So my name is Caroline Ward. I'm with the Office of Undergraduate Admission at William & Mary. I'm so happy to be talking to everyone today. Thank you so much for tuning in to the um, English major joint degree program session today. Uh, we have two very great panelists that are excited to share their experiences about the joint degree program. Um, as we introduce ourselves and then get to the Q&A where you can just ask any question uh, to our panelists, please feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. I know you'll probably see Q&A and chat. Um, both work, but we'd actually prefer the Q&A option. That way we can kind of just see it all in one spot. So again, thank you so much for joining and I'll go ahead and pass it off to Louise. Hi, I'm Louise. I'm a current fourth year in the program and I'm at William Mary this year. So the track I chose was the ABBA track as a William Mary home student. So the last two years for me, I've been in St. Andrews, but I started and ended at William and Mary. Hi, I'm Caroline. I'm also a fourth year English major, and I did the same track that Louise did. So I started at William and Mary, and now I'm finishing at William and Mary as well. Perfect. Well, for those tuning in, uh, for those that have um, signed on uh, to the meeting here, please feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A box. Our panelists are excited to answer your questions and I'm happy to answer any admission related questions or, or numbers wise questions. Um, but I'm happy to pose a question to our panelists um, as you guys type away. Uh, so basically, how did you know you wanted to pursue English? So this is a program that you have to know your major going right into it. Um, so what kind of tipped you over that that way? Yeah, so I can start that one off. Um, so I always just was really interested in English and I always really had a great time writing essays in high school and I thought that was really fun. Um, and I knew I wanted to go into publishing of some sort, editing or something to do with books because I love books. Um, and so I just figured English was the best possible major I could do if I wanted to go into that. And I have just enjoyed my experience as an English student and getting to write essays and read books, which are two things that I'm very passionate about. Yeah, I think Louise and I share that love of books. I think a lot of English majors do. But I, for me, I wanted to go to law school after uh, I graduated, which I am doing. I'm still, that's still the plan. Um, and I thought English was a great baseline to have in terms of writing essays, as Louise was saying, in terms of being able to articulate yourself and form an argument, defend an argument. Um, and so I think English has really prepared me for that. Okay. Looks like we have a question that's come in. What does the average workload look like for you all? So it varies from school to school, actually. Um, first year and second year are not as work heavy as third and fourth year, just because they're lower level classes. You're usually taking introduction level classes. Um, and that's the same across St. Andrews and across William Mary. They're just bigger classes. So they're a bit more focused on giving you content as opposed to really narrowing on you as a student. Third and fourth year, however, have been a lot more intense in terms of workload just because you're taking more classes and you're focusing in on either a specific author or a specific subject within literature. And you often have to read a few more books and engage with them a lot more critically along with secondary sources that you also have to read. Um, I personally have found that this year has been really challenging in terms of workload, but that's also because I'm taking five courses at the time and one of those is an honors thesis and that just requires a lot of work. Um, but it also keeps me busy and it's nice to have something to do when you're stuck at home. Okay, and then we have two questions that have come in. So the two questions, uh, what is your favorite class that you've taken within the program? And then what's your favorite book that you've read in the curriculum? I can start that one. Um, so I think my favorite class that I've taken was a poetry and cinema class that I took at St. Andrews. Um, it was going in, I didn't know that there was really that much of a crossover between the two. Um, and I thought it just looked very interesting. And it was, it was extremely interesting. And it was a lot of 
talking about Sylvia Plath and the type of cinema that came out around the same time that she was writing, and then a bunch of other authors as well, or poets as well. Um, and I, this semester, I'm also taking another poetry class that is exploring the same type of poets that I explored within the cinema, and it's really great. So the first one was at St. Andrews, and the second one is here at William & Mary. And I really appreciate that crossover um, because sometimes the classes you take at one place might not always be available at the other school. Um, and so I think in this case, it was a very great continuation of what I was doing. Um, and my favorite book that I've read, that's a tough question. Um, but there was a really great freshman year, actually. I read um, Interpreter of Maladies. It's a short story group uh, or collection of short stories by uh, Jhumpa Lahiri. And I really enjoyed reading those. Yeah, I think for me, my favorite class was also at St. Andrews and it was one I took my junior year, second semester, first semester, um, and it was called Victorian Literature and Science. So it looked at scientific literature during the Victorian period and how it classifies as literature. So we read Charles Darwin's Origin of Species and we were reading it as a piece of literature and talking about how it interacted with both science and writing. Um, we were reading also a lot of other scientific names like uh, John Tyndall, who's well known for the greenhouse gas effect and a couple of others and how they brought scientific theory as science was developing into literature, which was just a really interesting class that I never would have imagined taking. Um, and in terms of the favorite book I've studied, I love studying Wide Sargasso Sea. Um, I've had it in two classes so far, and I think it's just a really interesting book to look at because it kind of responds to Jane Eyre. Um, in a more modern perspective, but also just post-colonial literature kind of sense. And I've really enjoyed studying that one. Thank you. And then uh, we have a, a great question that I always like to hear from joint degree program students, but why did you pick the program? Yeah, so uh, as I'm from Northern Virginia, um, where a lot of William & Mary students come from, um, and so I applied to uh, all Virginia schools. I applied to UVA, James Madison, VTech, um, William & Mary, just William & Mary, and then also William & Mary with the program. Um, and the reason I chose the program was because I really wanted the opportunity to learn English in two different settings. One, where English was invented, created within the UK, but then also, in America. And I never thought about, I thought I had always wanted to travel. I come from a family that travels and lives all over the world. Um, but I never thought about doing anything other than just a semester abroad. And when I found this program, I thought it was so interesting and something that I thought would be something that I could carry with me forever is this program that has become part of my identity of being in these two places. And it has actually influenced um, with what law I want to practice. I want to practice international law so I can work in both the US and the UK. Um, and so I think when I was making my decision, I would get to, like the best of both worlds and I'd be able to have two years at one school and two years at another. And really just the process and the decision that came behind that was just such an easy one, I think. Yeah, for me, I was applying to a bunch of schools up in the Northeast because I'm from New Jersey and I I visited William Mary when I was a freshman in high school because my sister was looking at colleges and I just fell in love with it. I thought it was gorgeous, the campus, and I thought the people seemed so nice and I thought, wow, I definitely want to apply there, but it was so far away from home and then the program also sounded super interesting to me because it was kind of a really interesting thing you could do within English because of what Caroline talked about with regards to studying in two different settings, like one in the UK and one in the America. But um, it was the farthest school I applied to in many senses. However, when I was deciding finally in April, I was writing this pros and cons list. And I remember writing so much for the joint degree program, like just so much more than I was writing for any of the other schools I was even considering. And my one friend said to me, what do you think you're going to regret the most not having done when you're done with your college experience? And I said, it's going to be the program. Like, if I don't do it, I'm always going to think about what could have been in a way I wouldn't with the other colleges. And I think that very much influenced me to choose it. And it's been really influential in my life. Like Caroline also said, um, it's just shaped a lot of who I am today and a lot of things I'm passionate about and want to pursue. So I'm really happy that I ended up choosing this. That's a great way of putting it, like making a pros and cons list and then realizing um, how much you're adding to that side. Um, and then we have another question that kind of has multiple parts, but 
what were your reservations about the program going into it? And, and kind of going off that, have those worries been a big deal as you, as big of a deal as you thought? And then how did you handle that? I think that is, oh, sorry, Louise, I'll, I'll go first. I think that is a really great question. We have been talking a lot about how much we enjoy the program, but there is also reservations that came along with it. And I think part of it for me is I'm not someone who likes change very much. And so going from one school to another school, back to the first school, because I did a BBA, it, it was just something that I, I was very worried about going in, um, you know, leaving friends. And if you make any friends outside of your freshman year, you, you wouldn't see them again at school. And then once you have two years at one school, will you want to transfer back? And I think when I first when I first went over to St. Andrews and then when I first came back here, it was hard. I felt like a freshman every single time. And so I think one of the things is you'll always feel like you're starting over, which can be a good and a bad thing. Um, but it hasn't been, been as big of a deal as I thought. I The best way to do it is to just throw yourself into everything. I went, I started a sport, I went into theater. I was always in theater, but when I went over to St. Andrews, I started a new sport, went into theater, um, went into a couple of other clubs and that was a way to make friends. It was a way to learn about school. It was a way to learn the ins and outs of the town. And then when I got back here, it was during COVID, but I was able to also re-immerse myself in theater. And I was able to connect with people that I knew freshman year in a new and interesting way. Um, and yeah, so it, it was tough, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it was a great experience in that I now have so many new friends and so many friends across the pond, so many friends here and around the world that I never would have had before. Yeah, kind of echoing that, but I was talking about my pros and cons list um, that I was writing. And I know for this program, there were so many cons that I was thinking about, like the social aspect and also just transitioning academic and basically just the transitioning. That was, I was really apprehensive about that when I was applying to the program. And I think Caroline's right in that there are certain challenges to the program that there aren't to a normal college experience, but I found that I they weren't as big of a concern because that adds to that Caroline's talking about, about throwing yourself into everything. It really does help. And I was really concerned about the social aspect, about me meeting people and then leaving them and then meeting new people and then leaving those as well. But the program itself also becomes a friend group. Like you make friends within the program who are with you every single step of the way. Um, and some of your best friends come from the program. So that aspect, I didn't anticipate when I was writing my pros and cons list that I'd also make friends who are doing the exact same thing as me. And they've been with me for every step of the way, which has been absolutely wonderful. And a lot of the challenges of the program have ended up being a lot of what's made me a lot more comfortable as a person with change and flexibility and doing a lot of things I don't think I would have done if I'd done a normal college experience, I guess. Well, and you both kind of um, mentioned what our next question uh, deals with, but um, the, the next question mentions Caroline has already discussed participating in theater. What other activities and clubs have you both been a part of? Yeah, so uh, freshman year, I so in high school, I played tennis and did theater. Um, and so that's what I started with when I went to William & Mary. I played club tennis, um, jumped into some theater productions. When I moved, went over to St. Andrews, I started a new sport, Ultimate Frisbee, eventually became one of the captains um, my junior year, but I did that theater <laughs> again. Um, and then really joined, um, joined the Christian community over there, which was really big. And then coming back here, um, Louise and I both are on the WAMSTA exec board or William & Mary St. Andrews exec board. Um, and so we're doing that. And then um, I've just been continuing with the other things that I kind of had started. Um, and then I know Louise is gonna talk about it, but there's a bunch of like dance groups you can get involved in like Scottish dancing and English dancing and things like that. So I definitely dipped my toe into that as well, but I'll let Louise talk about it. Yeah, so I'm really involved in dance. Um, at William Mary, I joined the swing club and really fell in love with that, just found my people. Um, when I went to St. Andrews, I also joined the swing society there, which was kind of a counterpart across the Atlantic Ocean. Um, I also joined a Celtic and Cayley society, which is Scottish country dance that I completely fell in love with. That really characterized my years at St. Andrews. Um, and I've also been involved in editorial positions because I've mentioned I wanna go into publishing. and 
when I was at St. Andrews, I joined the St. newspaper as a copy editor and I was worked with a friend to kind of create a little literary arts magazine while we were there, which we had a really fun time doing. Um, and once I came back to William Mary this year, I joined the William Mary Review, which is a literary arts magazine that showcases poetry, prose, and art. Um, and I was on the prose board for that, so reading creative pieces and just deciding what was and wasn't a good fit for our magazine. And then, as Caroline mentioned, I'm on the WAMSTA Student Partnership, which has been great. And I'm also a peer advisor, which is a great support system that um, William Mary has for students in the joint degree program, where I essentially just interact with first years, second years, third years, everybody, and try and make the transitions as smooth as possible and give advice and participate in a lot of things to just make sure that the experience at William Mary through the program is good. <laughs> Wonderful. And then uh, we got a, an interesting question, another student panel that I wanted to pose to you all, because I'm sure people on the other side of the screen are wondering as well, but what's the first year curriculum like as an English major within the degree program? So earlier you all have mentioned the workload, but the actual classes or how many English classes do you take? What other classes do you take that first year? So one of the great things about the English program within the JDP is that it's a lot more flexible compared with some of the other majors. Um, so in your first year, you're only required to take two classes over the course of the entire year. So the first semester, usually um, you have to take British literature too. Second semester, you can take interpreting literature. And these are two classes that are offered I think both semesters at William Mary, um, and they're just meant to give you a foundation in English, essay writing, all of that good stuff. Um, every single other class is kind of up to you. You can take more English classes if you'd like to do that. You can also try and fulfill some of the general education requirements that the program has. Um, we have slightly different ones um, than the school at large, just because of the nature of the program. Um, but usually people work towards getting those out of the way. So I, my freshman year took an intro to psychology class, I took an intro to anthropology class and a bunch of other wildly out of my zone of interest classes that really introduced me to new subjects, which was really interesting. Awesome. So we have a question come in. Um, this question is asking, did either of you get a minor? Yeah, I actually got a minor in history. Um, and like Louise was saying, freshman year, because I had so many spaces to take extra classes, but at William & Mary, you have to take um, at least, I think it's at least 15 credits, so like five classes. Um, I decided to pursue history because I was deciding between English and history when entering the program and chose English, um, which I'm glad I did. But I also was really interested in history and concerning minor requirements, it's easier to get a minor in the other subjects within the program. So um, English, econ, um, film studies, classic studies, things like that. Um, and for me, you have to take 18 credits worth of history classes. And I think nine of those have to be at the upper level class. And so I did a couple of freshman year, one, two sophomore year, none junior year because junior year was all English classes. And then this year, a couple, and I finished my, um, I finished my minor last semester. And then you just declare it and that's it. Great. And then we have um, another question. Um, how did you utilize the transfer support and the other support resources that the program provides for dealing with the immense amount of change in that transition. Yeah, so this kind of leads into my role as peer advisor and both of our roles as um, members of the exec board of the Wilmsa Student Partnership. So a lot of our job just revolves around reaching out and just making sure everybody knows we're here. So my job, I send out a weekly email to first and second years who are in English and I just say, hey, I'm here, I have these office hours available and every once in a while I'll reach out and be like, hi, I'd love to meet for a coffee with you so we can just talk over how you're doing, um, what your semester looks like, anything you need help with. Um, that's a lot of what our support is involved in. It's a lot of just student reach out and just making sure that older students who know what the transition feels like can interact with younger students who don't necessarily know what it feels like, but can kind of talk to us and figure out through that. Um, a lot of the transfer support also just is just about reaching out because both schools have such robust systems for making sure that you're okay through the professors, office hours, 
um, through counseling services. And it revolves around students reaching out and making sure they're utilizing those resources. I know I, as a first year, I felt very much as a part of the William Mary community and I felt very at home here. So I didn't use them as much when I was a freshman because I just felt really great. And my second semester, my first semester at St. Andrews, once I had done the first transition, I also just was very involved with just other WAMSTA students um, and immersing myself into the St. Andrews client climate. So I wasn't necessarily using the WAMSTA resources as much, but I do remember going to a couple of my, my own peer advisors office hours and talking to him and asking him for help sometimes when things were getting a bit tough. Yeah, and I think just picking back, piggybacking off of what Louise is saying, um, I, on the exec board every year we try to see problems that went wrong the previous year or things that were great. And I think the more it goes along, the more we've become, we're evolving. And one of the things about COVID is this idea of people being online or people being in the US when they should be at St. Andrews. Um, and so what we've really been trying to do is like this Saturday, we're having a field day and it's just the joint degree program field day. And um, we're doing all these activities and things like that. And so in addition to reaching out to people, it's also about just bringing people together and really just saying, hey, these are activities that you can do, come join us. We did a bunch of virtual ones as well. Um, and so we're trying to evolve and do that. And anyone you reach out to, even if it's the wrong person, you know, you have a question about uh, like the English majors, but you need to be talking to someone else. Like everyone can just connect you with everyone else and they're more than happy to do so. Thank you. And then we have a question, um, a really great question about how has the program supported you in finding a career or for instance, applying to law school um, like Caroline's pursuing? Yeah, so for me, um, the program is very unique. And I think in a lot of ways, I had to explain one of them, one of um, the essays that I had to write for all of my law schools and applying was an addendum. And I basically had to explain, this is what the program is. This is how it works. This is how the two grading systems work. And a lot of that occurred in talking with the head of the program, um, Professor Marcus Holmes, also Professor Liz Barnes. Um, who was before Professor Holmes, and just saying, is this the proper way to do it? How do I convey this in um, like the most articulate way within you know the context of two to three pages? Um, and they were kind of there throughout the entire thing of helping me find um, professors to reach out to in terms of letters of recommendation, because you switch back and forth so frequently, it's hard to create that steady teacher-student relationship across all four years. Um, but they were very helpful in connecting us to a bunch of people. Um, but yeah, so that's how they helped me um, do that. Yeah, and just to touch on a slightly different issue, um, one thing that's great about the program is you have access to two career centers. So you have access to the Cohen Career Center here at William Mary, which has a lot of really great opportunities in terms of internships and jobs, but you also have access to the St. Andrews Career Center in case you're interested in going more abroad or in the UK. So you have access to two networks that want to help you and wanna make sure you get a job. Um, one great opportunity that um, I guess William Mary more than the program itself, but it's involved um, is they have the Ferguson Blair um, Publishing Seminar, which is essentially a just weekend where um, a bunch of publishing professionals are called in and they give a lot of advice about like publishing and breaking into that industry. And I knew I was really glad to have that because it was a great way to get to know more about publishing, which I really want to do. Um, so that was a great opportunity that just being at William Mary hooked me up with. And we have a, a question asking if each of you could share about your housing situation uh, throughout your four years. Yeah, so uh, freshman year, if you start at William & Mary, um, everyone lives on campus. Uh, as a freshman, you have to live on campus. Um, and so uh, you have normal dorm situations and uh, dining plans. So you eat in the, um, in the cafeterias and things like that. Um, at St. Andrews, I think, I don't think we are required to live in housing. Louise might um, correct me on that, but everyone who went over our year lived in student accommodation over there. And the way that works is you're assigned to one building and that building you have the cafeteria in the basement or the um, 
you know, the dining hall within your building or close to your building or wherever. And so you eat with the same, um, like the people you live with basically. And you might have something that's more of like a flat or an apartment situation, which is what Louise had. And she had um, her own bedroom and bathroom and then shared a common living space. And for me, I had my own bedroom and it was more of like a dorm style, shared bathroom. And then you would go um, and eat, you know, with people. And then junior year, I lived in a flat in town in St. Andrews that I had to kind of go through the housing application with like just um, separate renting agencies and things like that. And then fourth year now, I'm living in a house off campus. And so I went through Facebook and found um, a landlord that was advertising a room. And I live with uh, four other people or three other people, actually on the fourth in um, one house that's a couple minutes from campus. Yeah, so I also lived on campus my first year because William Mary requires that. And second year, Caroline's right, you're not technically required to live on campus, but it makes it a lot easier just because you don't know anybody there and the housing market in St. Andrews can be a bit tough to navigate, especially when you're across an ocean. Um, so I lived in a flat style living um, situation that was an on-campus living situation, which I really enjoyed. Um, having my own bathroom was great. Um, and then I chose to stay on campus for the last two years because I didn't wanna to have to think about housing and we're guaranteed housing as JDP students all four years if we wanna take advantage of that. And I thought, yep, that's something I wanna do. I just wanna think about my studying. I don't really wanna to have to think about getting a room anywhere. So my third year, I moved to a more hall style living in a smaller hall where it's a more, I guess, tight knit community. And then my fourth year, I'm living in one of the on-campus dorms in. Um, William Mary, which is really close to old campus, which I really appreciate, especially now in the spring when everything is flowering and it's really pretty. Thank you. And then uh, we have a question asking, what are your favorite parts about living both in Williamsburg and then also living in St. Andrews? So my favorite part about living in St. Andrews was, I don't even know, everything. <laughs> I, I loved St. Andrews. Um, I loved, being able to go for walks on the beach in, you know, you're in town and this small town. And then, you know, I'm a minute outside of town is the beach and it's beautiful. And um, I love just the access to a lot of European countries as well. I was able to travel a lot more when I was over in St. Andrews. Um, and I loved this kind of like small, both Williamsburg and St. Andrews are small towns, but uh, the school buildings are very immersed within the town. It's not like a separate university campus like William and Mary is. We have our campus and then we have CW and or Colonial Williamsburg and then things like that. And so it was really great to be immersed into this town with the locals, with everything like that. I actually had a job over there for, uh, for six months. So part of it was the summer, part of it was during the school year. And I just felt like I was really I stayed over the summer between my sophomore and junior year. And I just felt like I was very much a part of it. Living in Williamsburg, I love that I'm only uh, an hour and a half from my grandfather. I love being able to visit him. Um, I love being able to visit home as much as I can. I love um, being able to go on picnics with friends in Colonial Williamsburg, getting to see the horses. And right now, cause it's spring, they have little lambs and they're so cute. And so I go, for runs and walks and things like that um, around and I get to see all those. So that's been really fun too. Yeah, and for me, I think the beaches don't get enough um, love. They're just the best part. I've always loved the ocean and the water and they have some fun traditions involving jumping into the ocean um, and that kind of stuff. So I have loved um, being on the beach. Sorry, I think she was having a Zoom issue, but she's coming back in two, three minutes. Um, I love being close to the beach and at night sometimes I just need to get out and walk and being able to just walk on sand was amazing. Um, they also just have that historic feel about it in St. Andrews, like the cathedral, which is just this set of ruins. I thought that was absolutely lovely. And you have the pier that you can walk out to. And sometimes it's nice to just sit down on the pier and stare out at the ocean and just, you know, observe everything that's going on around you. In terms of William Mary, I really love the historic aspect of it as well, but it's a very different feel as Caroline kind of said. Um, at William Mary, it's, I guess, warmer is the word to use, although I don't know if that's exactly right. Um, I think it might be the red brick makes it look warmer, um, but I feel like it's kind of 
a bit more touristy in Williamsburg just because you're not immersed into as much. You can go and take a walk through CW and look at all these people reenacting stuff or look at the old buildings, but then you return to campus later and you're like, okay, tourist season is over. Whereas St. Andrews, it's a lot more like, okay, I'm going to walk through the cathedral now um, and just have a look at everything. I think, yeah, travel is also a great thing as Caroline said, and access to public transport in St. Andrews is amazing. Um, on the flip side, it's really nice in William Mary to be able to have these student centers where there are just students gathered around. Like Sadler Terrace, I didn't realize how much I missed having an area where it's just students, but being able to see people sitting at tables and it's everybody just around my age, there's something really nice about that. Um, and William Mary has a lot of spaces set up for students to gather, which I think is just a really nice opportunity to have. Yeah. Sorry, I had to duck out for a moment. I had a, a Zoom issue, so I apologize uh, everybody for suddenly uh, disappearing from the screen. Um, but thank you both for, for answering those questions that had come up. Yeah, we just finished with the question about um, the same question that you left while we were working on, so oh, we haven't awesome. even gone on. Awesome. Are there any others? I'm not seeing any other questions. Feel free to drop the questions in the Q and A box. I think I think there were a couple, and then when you left and came back in, I think they disappear. But oh. one of them was, "Have either of you done internships or other study abroad?" Um, so, and in I have done internships at. Um, so, like I mentioned, I worked, and that was an internship. It was a golf um, operations internship with the old course. Um, over in St. Andrews and I worked at, there's a hotel over there, very famous one, been there for a long time. Um, and I worked in their pro shop and I um, did a bunch of work with the golfers that came through, with the stewards that helped set up things like that. Um, but then I've also worked in law offices and I've done internships there um, for a couple of the summers. Um, and being in the program, we are overseas for two years and so, we do not have the opportunity to study abroad because we are already studying abroad technically. Um, so we have not done um, any other study abroad. Yeah, um, I think you can do summer study abroad specifically, but only if it's a William Mary program, if I'm correct on that. So if it's something that's offered through another university, then that's not something we can have access to. But if it's something that that's specifically William Mary, then that's okay because it counts as William and Mary credit. Um, I didn't do any internships, but last summer I actually did some student research. So I'm working on a honors thesis this year and I was given a grant by the research or by the career center um, to do some research over the summer and get a head start on my thesis, which is a really cool opportunity to do, especially to be funded like that because it allowed me to usually I work as a barista over the summers um, at a local coffee shop back home. So it allowed me to kind of not do that for as many days a week as I usually would and focus more on looking at the research that I was doing, which I really appreciate the opportunity. Yes, and I'll just chime in, Louise, you were right. Um, it has to be a William Mary study abroad program for that summer term. Um, so I'm just confirming that. Uh, and William Mary does have over 40 specific uh, study abroad programs uh, through them. So anybody out there interested in studying abroad during these summers in between, uh, the, the joint degree program years, you're certainly welcome to. I actually know a couple of joint degree program students that have done so. Um, and then of course, if you're in the JDP, you tend to travel a lot on the weekends and the breaks. Uh, it's fairly easy to do so. Um, but yeah, all, all, uh, all good there and lots of possibilities. And with the Wayne Mary programs, I think one of the main reasons they want to encourage that if you're interested in studying abroad during the summer is because that credit can, you know, transfer and you're just kind of easier on your on the students and to to have those classes apply. I think there was one more question while you were out um, with your Zoom oh. issue, um, and it was about um, why we chose ABBA, that specific pathway. Um, and I just want to answer that. Um, <laughs> I chose ABBA um, because of, I guess, it was partially social and partially academic, actually. Um, at the moment, I was very concerned with I guess the social transition of doing A, B, A, B, and I was concerned that I would have to say goodbye so many times before I would get to my fourth year. Um, and having two years at St. Andrews in the middle provides a sense of social continuity. Now looking back at everything, I realized um, that does, that's not necessarily true because I know tons of people who've done the A, B, A, B route and they've felt the same kind of continuity because having left for just one year, 
they're kind of able to return as if they were studying abroad, um, whereas two years is a lot longer to be gone from William Mary. Um, but another reason was I knew I wanted to do an honors thesis um, very early on because I just thought the possibility to immerse yourself in a project for an, a year and just really become familiar with it was something that was really interesting to me. And at St. Andrews, the dissertations are shorter, so they usually take only one semester, whereas at William Mary, you can do it for an entire year, and I thought that opportunity was really interesting, so I wanted to finish off here. Added to the fact that I wanted to stay in America um, after I graduated, and while the St. Andrews Career Center definitely has options for American jobs, I thought that it, was, it would be nicer to be in America while I was doing interview processes and doing that whole thing. Yeah, I was almost the same thing that Louise was doing, except I did not do an honors thesis, um, but I knew uh, applying to law school as well. At the time, I was planning to visit law schools and go for interviews and things like that. All of them have taken place from this exact sitting position um, because I have been here and doing it over Zoom. Um, but I definitely wanted to pursue uh, law school in America afterwards. I did consider pursuing it in the UK, um, but in terms of continuity, as Louise was saying, having two years at one school was really helpful. And I was able to stay over the summer, like I said. And so it was just, I had a full year where I didn't go home. So it was from December to December. Um, and that was really great to kind of really get that feel of home and um, things like that. So yeah, so kind of similar to what Louise was saying. All right. So it looks like we have a question asking, what are your um, thesis on? What's your thesis on? Yeah, um, mine is on hybridity theory in um, Indian literature. So hybridity theory talks about kind of, I guess, cultural hybridity. So kind of looking at how to integrate, like specifically in these two novels, it's um, an English identity with an Indian identity. Um, and I'm looking at things such as magical realism, which is a very literary term, um, and post-colonial theory, other elements of that, and how they work together within um, the Satanic Verses by Salman Rushdie and the Impressionist by Hari Kunzru um, to create, I guess, the overall message of hybridity, um, which sounds very literary and very complicated, but it's really just me looking at text very closely and just saying, look at this cool word. Isn't this interesting? <laughs> And then, like I said, I didn't do an honors thesis, but I still had to take um, an honors research seminar, and that was last semester. And I and it's four credits versus three credits. And um, I took America in the 1950s, and that was a combined English and film class. And at the end, I wrote a 14-page um, paper, and you, you got to choose the topic. And I actually chose to. It was write about or research something having to do with the 1950s. And what I did was I am lucky to have both my grandfathers who are, um, one is in England and one is in Fredericksburg, so it's just like an hour from here, um, but both of them are 95. And so they were both alive and kicking in the 50s. They were starting their families. They, um, both of them were impacted heavily by World War II. And so I basically did interviews with both of them and um, research into the two of them and how it affected their lives and being able to start a family and heteronormativity of, you know, a man, wife, children, finding a home, things like that. So that was really cool. That is really cool for sure. And then um, looks like we have people typing away, I'm sure with more questions, but wanted to pose the question to you too. Um, what piece of advice would you give these admitted students considering the joint degree program, specifically the English major? I kind of want to go back to what Caroline was talking about when we were talking about challenges, like throw yourself into everything head first. Just let yourself fall in love with the schools and the people that you interact with. Um, I guess holding yourself back won't help you. Like saying to yourself, oh, I'll be gone in a year. I shouldn't make connections. That's not going to help you in any way, shape or form. And I think a lot of people can enter the program with that kind of attitude. Um, but the only way you're gonna get the most out of it is to just be passionate and be excited and just throw yourself in head first and you know, accept that, yeah, leaving is going to hurt um, because leaving any school is going to hurt because you're gonna fall in love with it. Um, but it's worth it in the end because you're gonna meet so many cool, passionate people and 
you only get to do that if you do everything 110 percent yeah louise is so right and don't be afraid of joining a club and a month later being like hey this isn't for me and joining something completely different i joined skeet shooting which was like clay pigeon shooting which was very fun but you had to pay for every um every session i didn't want to do that and so i did a couple of them and then um i switched and i don't even know what i did after that i did another club but don't be afraid to throw yourself into it and then find something else and let it take you wherever you go um i guess my advice would be get to know the people in the program. Um, freshman year, you have a one credit class that you take with the head of the program and it's with all of the um, first year William Mary students. And then second year um, students that started at St. Andrews, but it's their first year at William and Mary. And just don't be afraid to meet everyone. And just because that summer in between William and Mary and St. Andrews, you have to get your visa, you have to pack, you have to make sure you know exactly what you're doing and you get your housing assignment. And I think that is when your group chat of with everyone in it is like, everyone's texting, everyone's talking. And when you're over in St. Andrews, it, you feel like a freshman again. And so seeing familiar faces around campus or around the St. Andrews town and you're like, oh, I know you and let's hang out. And I think that is a really big thing that I don't think a lot of people take advantage of freshman year. They try to make other friends or they think that, oh, I'll see these people all four years. When in reality, they become they're the only one who know your experience as well as you do. Um, so I think that's a really big step is making friends within, within the program. Great, great. Well, does anybody tuning in have any more questions for our panelists today? And we've all put our emails next to our names. So feel free to reach out and email. Um, I'm happy to share anything about admission. Um, but I'm sure you want to reach out to Louise or Caroline uh, with more information about the actual student experience within the JDP, but please feel free to reach out. And I want to thank you all so much for tuning in today and learning more about the joint degree program within the, the English department. And thank you to our fantastic panelists for, for um, sharing your experience. Have a wonderful afternoon, everybody. Bye. I think we can all just click the red button in the corner. They don't want to do it too early. <laughs>